topic involves the concept of independent events. So let's talk about two events, A and B. When are they independent? If the knowledge that A has occurred doesn't change your estimate of the probability of B, or the knowledge that B has occurred or happened does not change your estimate of the probability of A. Here's an example. Suppose one event is the Dow goes up more, at least 10% in a year and Microsoft goes down at least 30%. Those are not independent. Because if I tell you the stock market goes up at least 10%, it was a good year for the economy, you would think Microsoft would do well. Conversely, if Microsoft went down at least 30%, probably it was a bad year for the U.S. economy, that would change your estimate of the chance the Dow went up at least 10%. Now, if I consider the two events, the Dow goes up at least 10%, and the event Manchester United wins the Premier League in the same year, those, I think, are independent. If the Dow does well, I don't think it has any effect on how Manchester United does in soccer. And if Manchester United wins the Premier League in soccer, I don't think it has any effect on the Dow. So what's a quick way to see if two events are independent? Well, you take the probability of them both happening, called the intersection. Is that equal to the probability of the first happening times the probability of the second? So we have two little pictures here. So here we have 10 points in our sample space. So A and B are not independent in this situation. How would we figure this out? Well, how many points have A there? So the probability of A there would be 5 over 10, which is 1 half. Now, B has 6 points, so the probability of B is 6 over 10, which is 3 fifths. Okay, now the probability of A and B basically, there's only one point there, so that's going to be 1 tenth. So points in, all points in sample space have a chance of one-tenth. So does one-tenth equal three-fifths times one-half? Well, the last times I checked, the last, times I, last time I checked, that's not true. So A and B are not independent. And the reason for that, just looking at this intuitively, is if I tell you B happened, well, you're pretty sure you're not in one of these points for A. There's only this one little point there. Okay. Now, let's look at a situation here. Okay. Let's look at the probability of A and B happening. So here we have 20 points in the sample space. Are they independent? And I think they are. So we have the probability of A is going to be 5 over 20. That's one quarter. Now, the probability of B is 4 over 20, and that's 1 fifth. Now, how can A and B happen? There's only one little point in the sample space for that, right? So that's going to be 1 over 20. So the question is, does 1 20th equal the product of 1 quarter for A, probability, and 1 fifth for B? And the answer is yes. So A and B are independent. Now, if you look at this intuitively, if I told you B happened, okay, well then you, basically there are these four points for B, so the chance that basically A would happen would be one quarter. But the chance of A happening anyway is one quarter. So that's sort of why they're independent. Okay, now let's take a more couple of more concrete examples. You draw a card from a deck of cards. So a deck of cards has, again, 13 spades, 13 aces, etc., 13 clubs, 13 diamonds, 4 aces, 4 deuces, etc. Okay. So let A be the event a card is a spade and B be the event a card is an ace. Now these are independent. Now why? If I tell you that you got a spade, well, basically, there's still one chance in 13 you get an ace because there's 13 spades and one's an ace. And there are four aces in a deck, so overall the chance of getting a spade is four, uh, an ace is 4 over 52. So if we check this out here, the information we have is the probability of A, a spade is 1 quarter, 13 over 52, and the chance of an ace is 1 13. And the chance of both is going to be 1 over 50. Uh, at a spade is 1 over 52. 
And so if you multiply this out, 1 over 52, that's the chance of A and B. Does that equal the product of their individual probabilities? We say the joint probability equals the product of the individual probabilities. So we have 1 over 52 equals 1 over 52, true. So A and B are independent. Okay, now let's look down here. A is the event the card is a spade. B is the event the card is the ace of spades. Are those independent? And the answer is no. Let's check it out. So the probability of A, a spade, is going to be one quarter. Now the probability of B, the ace of spades, is going to be 1 over 52. And the probability of both, of course, is an ace and a spade, ace of spades, and that's going to be 1 over 52. Okay, now, does 1 over 52 equal 1 over quarter times 1 over 52? Well, of course not. So these are not independent events. Now, that makes sense, because if I tell you the card's the ace of spades, you have no, it's a spade. So the chance of it being a speed has jumped from one quarter to one. Now let's see if we can put together some solve some complicated problems by putting together concepts from our previous videos along with this one. Okay, but first, uh, just one comment: if you have more than two events and they're independent, this is not sufficient. But, uh, but basically, if you want to know the probability of events A, B, C, and D, if they're all independent, you want to find the probability they all happen, you can multiply their probabilities. Now, multi it, just the fact that this is true doesn't imply they're independent. But if they're independent, basically you can multiply individual probabilities of events to get what we call joint probabilities, no matter how many events that we have. So we can use it to solve two fairly complicated problems. So we have two independent systems that each have a 90% chance of working. What's the chance at least one system works? So that's 1 minus the chance no, zero systems work. And, and we'll assume these systems are always independent here. Okay, now the probably zero work. You need, is the probability they both fail. And then, the, so you can just multiply, since they're independent systems, the probably each one fails. So each one fails would fail 0.1 times 0.1. Just multiply those probabilities. You get 1%. Okay. So the probably at least one works by rule of complements. One minus 0.01 equals 0.99. Okay. Now another way to see this is we could say the probably at least one system works is the probability system A works or system B. Or both. And we know that's the probability A works plus the probability B works minus the probability they both work. Now, probably A works is going to be 0.9, B works is going to be 0.9, and the probability they both work, okay, is going to be, since they're independent, point, probably the first one works times the chance that probably the second one works. So that's 1.8 minus 8, 0.81, and that's 0.99. So we get the same answer. Now let's look at this one, which is a little tricky. We have three machines, they work the following fraction of the time, and machine failures are independent. So, let's see what happens here. What's the chance at least one machine is working, or the fraction of time at least one is working? So, that's probably at least one working. And that's going to be by complements, one minus the probably none are working. So what we need to figure out is the chance no machines are working. Now, 
Now the probably zero are working is the chance they all fail. And now by independence, we can take the chance the first one fails, which is 5%, times the chance the second one fails, okay, which would be 1 minus 0.9, which is theta fails 10% of the time, times the chance the third one fails, which is 8% of the time. Okay, so that would be what? 0 0.05 times 0.1 times 0 0.08. Okay. I'll show you the formula there. Okay, so the probably that zero working is going to be that, so our answer is going to be 1 minus 0 0.004, and I think that's just 0 0.996. Uh, 0.9996. So there we've combined what we learned about complements, okay, probably of A or B and independent events to solve some pretty complicated problems. But the concept of independent events is really important because it will help us understand the concept of independent random variables later. Okay, so thanks for watching, and, and there's a free course, a free 21-day course from Dr. Winston, um, and all of these videos are coming from one of three books. So first, this one, which you can see here at the top of the screen, um, Microsoft's book, which has... 355 reviews, uh, and then it's, let's see, 4.6 stars. Um, it's coming from this book as well, his marketing analytics book, which is down here, and you can sort of see 4.5, or his newest book, his analytics stories book, which is here. And with that one, you can see it's four point something, or maybe even five. I don't think it's five. Yeah, 4.8. And so yeah, anyways, in the description, there's a free 21-day course from Dr. Winston, um, or you can go to excelwithwayne.com slash free, and it'll be there. But again, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, just uh, please let us know. Thanks.